Hello, today we will explain you a fantasy adventure movie named Maleficent. Before we begin, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So the movie starts and a pretty girl is shown. She has horns on her head, and she also had wings. Maleficent was her name. She was a lovely fairy. She lived in a mystical forest. She had never seen the outside world before. This lovely forest was her entire world. However, she is happy in her forest, except for humans. There were all the other creatures present in the forest. There were some unusual creatures present as well. Maleficent was walking in the forest one day. She notices a small boy, because he was her age. She asked him, Who are you? What exactly are you doing here? Maleficent learns from that small boy that he lives in a neighboring kingdom. He found a diamond there and picked it. Maleficent asks him to return the diamond to her. Maleficent offers him to drop him off at his kingdom. That boy says, Okay, I'll go, but will you be my friend? And if I return to this forest, may I play here with you? Then Maleficent tells him that this is a magical forest, and that he should not come here. But let's wait and see. They shake hands. Maleficent then feels a shock from that boy's iron ring. The iron, she claims, burns the fairies, so don't come if you're wearing it. Following that, we watch the boy return to his kingdom. But the kingdom from which he hails wants to occupy that forest. That boy's parents were dead. Maleficent considers him a friend, and the fact that they were from the opposing kingdom made no sense to them. They have been playing together for many years. That boy used to come and play with Maleficent there. They had gotten older. They were both 16 years old when they began to like each other. Maleficent believes that humans are not fairies' enemies. They are nice. She is also unaware that greed is present in humans. One day Maleficent was thinking many days had gone by and the boy hadn't arrived. She remembers one more thing about that boy. He claimed that when he gets older, he shall occupy the kingdom and the castle there. As a result, Maleficent was completely unaware that the boy was greedy and selfish. Maleficent was sitting in her forest one day. She notices that the king of another kingdom has arrived with a large army and horses to take over the forest. Maleficent was the forest fairy. She was fully aware of the need of defending her forest. She comes to defense. She was more powerful than before. She informs the king that he is not permitted to visit her forest. To which the king says, I did not ask you for your permission. He tells his soldiers that he wants her dead. The king's army is now marching towards the forest. However, mysterious animals from the forest attack them while riding on the horses. The king and his army were now badly injured. All humans run from there in terror. Humans say this is the magical forest, and we cannot fight them. The king returns to his kingdom. The king was elderly and weak. He gathered the entire crowd. He tells them that they are all aware that there is a lot of wealth in that forest and I have said from the start that we will occupy that forest. But, due to my health, I don't think I'll be able to go there and fight. But I promise you that whoever kills Maleficent will be married to my daughter. Then a man among them says he thinks he can do this task. This man was no other than Maleficent's childhood friend. Stefan was his name. We can now see Stefan going to meet Maleficent. After many years, he returns, and Maleficent asks him, Where have you been for so many years? Don't you remember our friendship? He says, Please forgive me. I was busy. But I didn't forget about you, even now. I came to inform you that our king wants you dead. He asks her to take care of herself and he was there to defend her. They then begin to talk. Maleficent declares, I forgive you, because she had no idea that people could be selfish. She had faith in him. Stefan, on the other hand, was a selfish man. He makes her drink the drugged water, and she passes out. Stefan then picks up the knife and tries to kill her, but he fails. The next morning, we notice that Maleficent has no wings as she comes to her senses. Her wounds were visible. Maleficent couldn't believe her eyes when she saw it. She begins to shout and cry, because her lovely wings were missing. She was no longer a fairy with wings. On the other hand, we see Stefan arrives to the king carrying Maleficent wings. He says to the king, See, I fulfilled the promise I made to you. The king is happy with him. He makes him king of that kingdom after taking wings from him. Stefan's dream is also fulfilled here. That selfish man's dream. On the other hand, we see Maleficent in the forest. She was depressed as she couldn't fly anymore. While wandering through the forest, she was on her way somewhere. She notices a hunter is about to kill a crow. She can't take it anymore. She immediately transforms the crow into a human. That hunter gets scared and runs. That crow, who has now become a human, approaches her. He expresses his gratitude and asks her why did she transformed him. Maleficent then says, I couldn't tell you. I just had sympathy for you. That crow declares, I shall now serve you for the rest of my life. Whatever you say, I will do as you say. That crow was happy to become a human. Diavel was the name given to him. Diavel brings her information from all around. Maleficent discovers Stefan stole her feathers in order to become king. She begins to hate humans. Her faith in mankind was shattered. Then we learn that Stefan married the king's daughter 
and became the king. He now has a daughter. There was a celebration across the kingdom to celebrate her birth. A lot of guests approached from a long way for the celebration. Maleficent sees an opportunity and goes there as well. She compliments the baby on her beauty. However, she says when she will reach the age of 16, a needle will pierce her hand and she will die as a result of it. Then Stefan approaches her and tells her not to do so. Why are you taking your revenge on me from my daughter? Then Maleficent says, I was a girl, too, and remember what you did to me. Maleficent's heart was still filled with kindness, so she gives a solution and tells Stefan, your daughter's life might be saved if she finds her true love on her 16th birthday. Stefan becomes worried as a result of this. He calls three little fairies and requests that they should transport his daughter away from the kingdom, and instructs them not bring her here till she's 16 years old. Otherwise, her curse will be fulfilled. He then proceeds to attack the forest, but he couldn't attack it, because Maleficent has used her powers to surround the forest with walls. That forest was off limits for humans. Then we see the princess, Stefan's daughter, whose name was Aurora. Those three fairies have brought her a long way. Maleficent, on the other hand, knows her location. She tries to scare her. However, Princess Aurora begins to smile. Maleficent's heart was melting for her now. Maleficent was a good fairy. After all, she wasn't cruel. The three fairies that look after Princess Aurora were careless. Maleficent frequently saves Aurora's life. She would save her life sometimes from falling off the mountain and sometimes from the trees. Princess Aurora grows older with time. Princess Aurora had reached the age of 15. This means she only has one year to finish her curse. Now the fairies had led her to a location which was within a border. The high forest surrounded the location. Princess Aurora has never seen the outside world similar to Maleficent so she was curious about what was outside. She goes there one day and begins to look for other beings. Meanwhile, she feels that there is someone. She says that if someone is there then they should come forward as she has a lot of questions. Maleficent had arrived. She approaches Princess Aurora. Princess Aurora screams and says, You are the one who has looked after me since I was a child. Why didn't you come in front of me? You're my godmother. I know who you are, and I like the crow you have with you. Maleficent was shocked by the response. As a result, she becomes happy from inside. After all she was a good fairy, Maleficent starts to adore Aurora. She no longer wanted her curse to be fulfilled. They have formed a close relationship. They live together, play together, and communicate as if they were mother and daughter. When Princess Aurora was asleep, though, Maleficent uses her abilities to try to reverse the curse. But she realizes that the curse of many years cannot be reversed, especially when it comes to the end of the curse. Maleficent was concerned as a result of this, because her 16th birthday was approaching. Then she prays hoping she will find her true love soon. As a result, her curse will be reversed. Following that, we find Princess Aurora and Maleficent were talking in the forest. Princess Aurora asks Maleficent, Where are your wings? Maleficent claims that all fairies have wings, therefore I had wings as well. But they had been stolen from me by a human. I was happy with them. I used to fly in the skies. I miss my wings. Maleficent was going to cry as a result of this. Then Princess Aurora calms her down and tells her not to worry. Tomorrow is my 16th birthday, and I will ask for a permission and move in with you. You are not alone. I am there for you. Maleficent, on the other hand, is well aware that it was not possible, until she finds her true love and it cannot happen in, in one day. From there, Princess Aurora was on her way home. On her way, she notices a boy. He was quite attractive. He was her age. And they liked each other when they saw each other. Following that, Princess Aurora returns to her house. She tells the three fairies that she wants to leave. She was telling them that she wanted to travel to Maleficent, who was far away from their home. The fairies believe that she knew something about curse and that her parents are still alive, and she wants to go back to the kingdom. Following her birthday, those three fairies reveal the truth to her, that what happened, and that there's an evil fairy out there get her. They inform her that it was none other than Maleficent. Princess Aurora couldn't believe her ears when she heard it. She visits Maleficent because she is depressed. She asks her on what she heard was really true, to which Maleficent replies, Yes, I have given you the curse, but now my heart has changed and I have done this only because of your father. I do not want you to die. I adore you. Despite the fact that Princess Aurora was sad and leaves, she rushes towards the kingdom, going there and hugging her father. She says to her father that she really missed him and believed she was alone. Her father becomes angry at those three fairies. He instructed them to keep Aurora away till her 16th birthday then also why have they bought her back a day before following her 16th birthday? And the curse is about to get fulfilled. He orders his army to take her back or lock her in a room where nothing should be around her and no one will go. But that king is unable to stop the curse. Princess Aurora's 16th birthday approaches. Due to the influence of curse, 
Princess Aurora goes to the location of the spinning pins. They had needles on them. She touches the needle because of the curse. Then she passes out. She falls asleep. The king was concerned since his daughter was now sound asleep. She'll never wake again. Maleficent was also depressed. She goes to the boy who met Princess Aurora on her route. She believes he may be her true love and if he kisses her she will wake up. Then Maleficent goes to the location where Aurora was sleeping with the boy. Meanwhile, the three fairies who looked after Princess Aurora were also present there. They tell the king that you are Princess Aurora's father. If you kiss her forehead, she could wake up. Perhaps you are her true love. Then King Stefan replies, No, I can never be someone's true love. Maleficent was deceived by me. That is why all this is happening. Now, Maleficent arrives with that boy there and he approaches Princess Aurora. Princess Aurora is still sleeping. Then Maleficent realizes he is not her true love. When Maleficent sees this, she begins to cry. Then she tells her that she would miss her dearly. She will miss her smile and she will never forget about her. While sobbing, Maleficent kisses her forehead. She was then about to go from there. Then she hears a voice from behind saying Godmother. That was Princess Aurora's voice. Maleficent was, in fact, Princess Aurora's true love. Because she genuinely cared for her. Princess Aurora tells Maleficent, I want to live in the forest with you. Then Maleficent was about to leave, carrying her. But suddenly Stefan Army puts a net around them. That was an iron net capable of killing fairies. Maleficent was powerless in this situation. Then she transforms her crow into a dragon. That dragon crow begins to fire the flames from its mouth. It burns everyone who is present. Maleficent was now free. But suddenly King Stefan appears with his men. He was armed with an iron shield to permanently kill Maleficent. Princess Aurora, on the other hand, notices Maleficent's wings. Those wings were in action. They appeared to be aware that their owner was present. Princess Aurora frees her wings from capture. They get immediately attached to Maleficent. Maleficent has wings again. She starts to fly again and takes Stefan with her. However, she does not throw him from the building. Stefan was trying to attack her. They were both going to fall from the castle as a result of it. Stefan had held Maleficent's wings to prevent her from flying. But just as they were about to fall to the ground, Maleficent flaps her wings so she can fly. Stefan falls to the ground and dies as a result of it. Everything was in order after this. The next morning, Maleficent has removed all of the boundaries though she had scattered around the forest. The flowers start to bloom once again. The greenery has returned. After that, she tells Princess Aurora, You are now the queen of this forest. The kingdom and the forest merge together, and they all begin to live happily ever after. This is how the movie ends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more.